Um, so uh, I like to talk about some uh, some deep stuff. Some uh, go into the uh, the higher level poop and uh, um, can infuse that into the simple exercises we've been doing because there's a, a, a deeper understanding there and particularly like to focus on the elbow gin. I just published a, uh, a blog post on uh, www.rickbarrett.net um, my and it was uh, right there on the front page so you can uh, check that out and um, uh, also a YouTube video which goes into some detail about it but I'd like to get into that today and kind of put it in the context of what we're doing because I think this is this is kind of big the uh, the Evogen I've been mentioning it for weeks now but uh, um, I'm not sure I've, I've provided sufficient context for it you know Beatrice was pointing out recently how you know there are levels upon levels of which you can get the uh, get the idea and uh, I just lost picture again Put it back on. So, uh, keep losing my monitor. There we go. Okay, good. Okay. So, uh, uh, there are levels upon levels that one can get it. And the point that, Rich, that uh, Beatrice was making is that until you actually test it out, it's, you know, you don't know how deep it goes. And a lot of it has to do with your ability to control your brain your ability to control your attention and to access different parts of your brain, which then allows you to, to get more body-mind integration, which then awakens that spiritual connection. So the, uh, the purpose of the blog was to clarify the uh, the elbow gin, but put it in the context of there are what's called the eight gates in Taiji Chuan, and um, sometimes called the eight energies, and it's uh, what they are 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 the the energies that animate the movements of Tai Chi and make it more than just a physical exercise and make it an internal process and so if uh, there's Hong Lu Ji An Sai Li Jo and Ko which is uh, translated into ward off roll back press push pluck um, split elbow and shoulder okay and there's not a lot written about this stuff even though it's supposed to be like the core of of the um the core of taiji to to these are the gates to get actually get in there and the probably the least that's been written is about the elbow gin joe and usually it's translated as as an elbow strike like a Boom, like giving someone an elbow or bam, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, I was always kind of confused by this, this translation because it, uh, it it didn't have the same kind of energy that, that the other things. It's sort of like, oh, the elbow is just sort of the, the delivery system. It's not the, uh, it's, 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 the, uh, it's the, the arrow head. It's not the bow that, that, is, that is shooting the arrow. So, uh, then I came across something. Let me read it to you. Just uh, I just read a little piece of it, um, and it's uh, called. It's one of these traditional pieces called the Song of of uh, the Eight Gates. But the uh, so um, part of it says, if its motion is connected and unbroken. Nothing can oppose its strength. The functional use is unlimited. That's just a, uh, that's, that's a, so it, 
it sounded like a whole lot more than just smacking somebody with your elbow. When you, when you think about it in those contexts, like, okay, something else is going on. So what I did was I, I was starting to notice that things that I had been doing with my elbows to access a internal power, uh, you know, I, I started to say, oh, I wonder if, if that's it. I wonder if that's what they're talking about there, even though it's not really talked about. And whenever, I guess the translation of, of Joe, which is spelled Z-H-O-U, of course, and uh, it's, uh, it, it really has nothing to do with elbow, even though tradition has it that this is an elbow strike. So, what, uh, so going back to the eight gates, so each of the, the like say if we have a, um, a ward off posture, we're here like this, say, we're in a ward off posture, that's a, an external form. But what animates it is Pongjin, that is, it's an up and out expanding energy. So we practice Pongjin by practicing our ward off. Most people learn the form and practice it. Some never move past the, the idea of just using it, the form as, a, uh, as, uh, as the end point. Yeah. Back up so they can see your head. Oh, is the, uh, that chopped off? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, you have that, that that's Pong Jin. It's, it's an up and out energy. Once you get the, the Pong Jin, the, 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 the internal power that comes with that, then you can use it in any kind of situation which is, it requires an up and out energy. Same thing with Lu Jin, which is rollback. So this kind of thing where you're, it's a down and in kind of energy. So you're coming down and in, all right? So that's how we practice it. But the energy itself is, can be done very, very quietly. I think when I, uh, I wrote in uh, Taiji Chuan through the Western Gate about an incident where um, Maria and I went to visit uh, 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 Master, uh, what's his name? The, uh, uh, Wei Sun Liao. Uh, Wei Sun Liao. Recently out in, in Chicago, and he said, "Oh, would you like to see? Would you like to see rollback?" And I said, "Sure." And I was expecting this kind of thing, and he just touched my 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 elbow like this, and boom, I dropped onto the ground like 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 a sack of potatoes. It was like whoa, it's like the, the the floor just kind of swallowed me up, and I, I I dropped very quickly. So he was accessing the energy of it without any of the external movements, and that's a very high level, but that's a similar kind of kind of thing there. Do we practice this so we can get that, oh, that down and in kind of energy? Press is is like this, where you're uh, you're you're bringing two forces together, either bringing them together and pushing out that way or squeezing them together. And then push on is where it's actually a down and then out kind of kind of thing. So it's like it's we call it push but it's actually you're compressing downward first and then reaching out so those are the kind of things if we get to joe then this elbow thing something different so um this is all heading somewhere what i want to do is 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 give you some context for this so whenever we do our exercises and think we're going to be able to plug that in because there's something very special that happens when we do this, and it's not just about being able to kick ass with it. It's about being moving into a state of wholeness that is considerably more than what you're used to. It is a doorway. It is a gate into an expanded state of wholeness, an expanded state of, of being that is kind of remarkable. So maybe, uh, uh, Marie, you want to give me a hand here with this? So, you know, the, in, that, in that song of, of the eight, um, uh, eight gates, there was, uh, you know, talked about its, its power is irresistible. So if, we, if Marie just brings her arms out like this, right, and I'm going to, I'm going to push in and, and she's going to push out like this, right? And it, it's fairly easy to collapse this because this is a pretty weak muscular connection there. But if, 
she reaches with her elbows. So she actually feels that. And then I try to push in and nothing's going on. I can't do that. That's because the elbows have, have activated the whole system, right? She's bringing it all together. So to, to reach out just, just, just like, like, like this, right? So, so you're, so it's, you can see that it becomes very powerful. Same kind of thing if I grab her by the wrist and she tries to turn and with muscles, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. But if she, <laughs> if she uses her, her elbow gin, then something very dramatic happens. The same thing if the elbow wants to go this way, right? So there's a, you're extending outward, right? If she just pushes like this, nothing going on. But if she feels that that reaches the elbow first, and then she does that, it is something rather dramatic. You get that, she immediately gets this effective power that is really remarkable. So we have, we have these, these different ways of doing it. We have the rotational, we have the extension, right? And then we have this way, right? We have moving in and out like that. There's a rotation that way. Thanks. So we get, we are generating a lot of this power by, by doing it, by first feeling the elbows, reaching and feeling with the elbows. And I'd like you to actually uh, do something with me. And that is you start by first feeling something with your elbow. So let's say uh, this is on camera here. So I just reach over to this wall here and I feel it with my elbow. So if, if you can just find something and feel that with your, with your elbows. You, for most of us, this is actually a, a giant leap to actually feel something with your elbow. It's, it's, we don't go there very often. And let's say we hit it on a corner of a table or something. And consequently, they, we don't really have the wiring for that. But if you feel that with your elbow and then just rotate your arm like that, just, just bring your arm up while feeling that. And so the, you, it helps if you point your finger too, but you want to feel that. And good, we can feel that and then just rotate your forearm. So getting this, getting a, uh, a felt sense of this. You can also do this and then extend outward like this. You can also come inward, but it, it's better to wait on that one because the bicep tends to, to gobble up a whole bunch of your, your attention and you don't want to, uh, you don't want to go there when you're first learning how to do it, but somehow you can extend outward and that's, uh, that works a lot, a lot better. You can also just grab your elbow and feel it and do this many times a day. So you're feeling that elbow. And so getting that something out there, feeling with the elbow is the first step. Then the, the, the next step, is to just feel the internal, feel the elbow from the inside. And this is another big leap for the nervous system because it's, it says, what? What's going on? We're using interoception now, not proprioception, which is how we're moving in the world, but interoception is what's going on inside the body when we can actually feel the elbows. And this goes for any other part of the body too, but we're focusing on elbow gin right now. You feel those elbows and then notice your hands immediately light up. You get this surge of, of energy. What's going on here is you're opening up the shoulder. So how many times are we told to relax your shoulders, relax your shoulders, you know, and you drop them and then as soon as you start not thinking about it, then you then they creep up again or they get tight or we initiate from the shoulder. So like when we're doing an elbow stroke, we're, we're doing it from, from the shoulder. But if you feel the elbow first, then you immediately start to change your energy and you start to change your state of being. You get 
much more rooted, connected immediately. Now, if you notice with Maria, it, was, it wasn't just the fact that she got much stronger, but she also was nailed to the ground. There's an immediate rooting factor that occurs there. But we don't need some, uh, we don't need a tester to uh, to go there. You can actually feel it yourself. You and I encourage you to start to cultivate even more that internal sense that you don't need that external feedback to actually feel it. You want to notice it by the change of your internal state. You know, particularly in the challenging times we're in right now, your ability to move into this state, which is a very peaceful, clear-minded state, it helps us to deal with all the challenges that are that are around us. And then we start to introduce into a, a different moves. So I'd say we I'm doing a ward off. I, I set my elbow here and then I rotate and bring the arm out. Boom, like that. So it's coming out like that. We'll play around with that a little bit later. So uh, I'd like to unmute for a moment and just ask if anybody has any questions so far because I covered a lot of material here and, uh, and uh, I hope it was clear enough. So uh, anybody? In the gallery, good. Nora. Uh, so the gate is that similar to when you is that one of the, is one of the gates the jade pillow gate is that the same? Notion? It's a different 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 gate. These yeah, are. But it's, but it's the it's same. Is it the same? Them, the uh, these gates. What's that? Is it the same concept though in terms of opening the the gate? Different. It, it's it's a different concept. Uh, a different. Okay. A different concept is more. The gate to Taiji understanding probably would be a way of, of doing it. It's, it's they're called the Bamen, B A M E N, and you can think of it as uh, you know kind of the entry points into a higher level understanding of Taiji Kung uh, Fu, right? Whereas the Jade Pillow Gate is an actual energy point that is uh, okay. which is a, a separate thing, but it's also a gate, another in another in another sense. And uh, also extremely important from uh, from all the other things, but it's a uh, uh, this is these are the uh, the uh, eight essential Tai Chi gates. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else? Um, okay. Uh, Beatrice. I'm just uh, that that passage you read about the elbow um, when you were uh, about it having sort of a power that can like had, like sort of limitless power. Is there any? Is that quote someplace? Because it really described the, the experience we had. We've had all. It really captured that thing that happens, which has happened throughout, you know, the class in different different occasions. But it's, and it's so fascinating that it's, that it's associated with the elbow. Yes. Yeah, and it, uh, uh, it is in something called a traditional piece called the a traditional piece called the Song of the Eight Gates, and uh, it's an obscure piece that. Very few people have read, you know, but it's one of those things that's out there. And there's a, a few different translations uh, for it. But uh, what struck me was the fact that it it seemed to integrate all these different pieces in, in a very uh, uh, a very powerful way. And it said, I don't know, if you, if you bring all these pieces together with the elbows, it's it's unstoppable. It 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 has you know, all these applications like oh okay and that kind of describes what we're doing with this if we can just bring this in and say oh yeah we incorporate that with yin and yang we incorporate that with insubstantial and substantial which are both mentioned in this passage i didn't read it to you but it says it's in there so just check out my uh, my blog it's the whole the whole uh, record, um, quote is in there and uh it uh you can do a further search on it and get the other ones as well but I found it. I found it really interesting and a sense of like discovering something which has been hidden. That uh, it's like, oh, no, nobody ever told me about this, and uh, so to actually get in there and say, well, maybe this is it. So that's uh, that's what I got out of it. Anybody else? Okay, let's. Uh, so let's uh, let's do those foundation exercises and this time with a lot of emphasis 
on activating the feeling in the elbows first. So we're starting with the feet, um, you know, but uh, shoulder width apart. And we bring up the, the arms like this and rotate. And this time when you're rotating inward, you reach with the thumbs. When you're rotating outward, you reach with the, the little fingers. And so we get like this and set your elbows. So they become the pivot point. So we don't want to like get the elbows moving around like this. We want the rotation to be very direct. So we're producing what's called a short gin. Uh, gin, which is something that is able to produce a tremendous amount of power in a very little space. It helps if you point your index fingers. It also helps if you have your hands somewhat rounded. Like if you put your hand on your head and you get that kind of rounded feeling, open the fingers and you'll feel a lot of chi. You're reaching out, you're not tensing the hands, but you're reaching out with them. So you're feeling the elbows, reaching out with the elbows, opening the shoulders, reaching with the fingers, reaching with the thumb, the little finger, thumb, little finger, and you can feel that energy heating up real fast, okay? We're not gonna do too many of those. You know, another variation I've been doing for, gosh, uh, probably 30 years now is you put your arms down like this and you rotate like this. Same idea. We're moving from the elbow. The elbow is the pivot point. And just feel into your hands as you do this. Notice how it just lights them up really fast. This is what got me interested in, in the elbows, gosh, you know, like 30 years ago. And I said, oh, this, this is really working here. And then I started to play around with it. Good. Now, just hang out there in a neutral state there. Just feel into the energy right now. Feel into it. But also notice your change of the state you're in, your mind. Feel the, the sense of, of peace, yet there's a, a lot of potentiality that is being generated in this, in this state. There's sort of a, there's an expression in, uh, in Tai Chi that says that the chi should be uh, excited and excitable. So even though you, uh, uh, your shen, your spirit is peaceful, your energy, you want it to be excited and excitable. So it's like the eye of the hurricane. So you are very calm and peaceful and the, all this thing, but the energy is just like, it's crackling. We want to get that. And now bring your, uh, your uh, right hand up the center line, reach out, and then your left hand up and sink into the quad as you turn, right? You turn the body as you're doing this, reaching out. So here we are drawing the water chi up from the dantian up to the heart, extending outward and then down under the dantian to the fire chi then heats up the water. So we create this turbine effect. Very powerful energy and we're, we're creating a, a bit of alchemy here where the cauldron of the Dantian, where the water is, gets heated from below by the fire chief from the heart. Wanna get that wall moving. Feel the energy move. Good, and relax, bring your arms down and feel into that energy again. Feel the, the alchemy. Feel your whole body energetic connection. Good, now palms up and carry. 
Feel the resistance of the, of the space as you move through it. Rotate, feel your elbows. Rotate and then uh, press down. Feel your elbows as you press down. Reach. You want to set those elbows first and then feel. And of course, you can focus on all kinds of different places when you're doing these exercises. But for tonight, we're just focusing on really getting the most out of the Joe energy, the elbow gym. And feeling the transformative powers of that. And feel the chi, feel it circulating throughout your whole body now. Feel maybe you're feeling a little warmth. There's a sense of, of fullness there. Good. Now uh, put your left foot forward, reach out your hands, and feel the ball of your right foot, set the right knee, and spiral down to the right. But also emphasizing reaching down with the elbow, reaching through with the elbow as you're doing this, setting the elbows and reaching out. So just every time you can bring your conscious awareness to this and actually feel your elbows, you're creating new neural connections. You're changing your wiring. You're changing your nervous system. You're activating parts of your brain that have been asleep. By bringing the sensory neural network to consciousness, you are making the conscious, the pre-conscious conscious, and as a result, it awakens the brain into a state of super consciousness, body, mind, spirit integration. Uh, step forward to the right foot. And same deal. Feel your elbows. Reach. Coming down, feel that elbow pressing down. You're still doing the, all the other stuff, all the other cool stuff, the three pillars. You're still reaching with the knee one. Opening the jade pillow gate. And you really can only do that if you are in a super conscious state. If you're trying to do it with a your regular mindset, you're probably not going to be able to keep track of all the stuff. But with, in a super conscious state, you can deal with all kinds of things at once. Yeah. Uh, and then bring your left foot forward. Little longer stance this time. We're going to get. We're going to really extend out. We come down, sink down a little lower, reach out and open up, reaching out and opening the spine, and then come down and reach out again, feeling the elbows reaching. Opening the spine, opening, reaching. Reaching is another thing that we have to learn how to do because there's so many inhibitions on reaching out. And to be able to actually create the neural connections that allow you to feel comfortable reaching, it takes some work. And bring your right foot forward. And same deal here, coming down and feel your elbows. Reach, open the spine and reach. Feel those elbows. Yeah, and come back to neutral. And 
you feel. Feel the chi. So remember that chi is the energy, but whenever we direct it, use our intention to direct it and through the body, then it becomes chin. So it's no longer just energy, it's directed energy. Like uh, water in a hose. If the if the if the hose is full but the, the spigot's not on, there's no there's no no power behind it. It's if there's water there, that's kind of like the energy. But whenever you turn the spigot on, this like it, it it becomes directed energy. Okay, so then bring your arms out like this. Feel your elbows. Relax your arms. Relax your shoulders. Open up the shoulder joint. I used to do this kind of stuff for like an hour at a time. You don't have to. You can, you can get your cup full really quickly in a few minutes if you do it correctly. Of course, if, you, you know, if you're training for something specific, you want to get, like I was doing it for a tournament, that would stand for an hour. And there became an element of Perseverance and endurance would enter into it. But if you're just going for the energy, you can get it, get it done in a fairly uh, short order. I kind of like to do it maybe for 10 breaths. Hold it like that and that'll, that'll usually get the job done. You can do longer if you want to bring your Feel your elbows and just raise your hands without moving the elbows and bring it up to there. Reaching out with the elbows, opening the shoulders, reaching out with the fingers. Reach with the knee one. Feel the balls of your feet. Use your breath to allow yourself to get even more sung, more relaxed, more settled into your posture. Be aware of your internal state right now. The energy is excited and excitable, but you're calm, peaceful, and clear-minded. You are not your energy, but your energy is something that, that you are intimately connected with. If your feet get really, really hot, you can just pick up the heels and that will, that will disperse the chi. The chi build up in your feet. And then step in with your left foot, deep breath, inhale. And as you exhale, press down on that plunger and disappear the chi. Just pause for a moment and feel into the emptiness. The quietude. Good. Okay. Okay, you can unmute for a moment. And how did that uh, how did that feel?
Did anybody notice a, a, a significant change as a result of using the elbow chin? It was, it was subtle for me. It was what? It was, it was noticeable, but subtle. Subtle, okay, noticeable, but subtle, okay. Anybody else? Happy. Happy, happy good. <laughs> good. Big time hand energy, big time hand energy. Say again? Big time, big time hand. Big time Hands hand. Yes. Really full. Good, good. It, uh, it helps if you got someone to work with so you can actually feel the power and because it is so subtle that it, you don't necessarily believe that it can be as powerful as it is. But it, um, you know, when we're working with this and, and, and really getting uh, tuned in, then it requires almost no motion to, to create a big effect. And then we, we're starting to, to play around with that, the upper levels of, of Taiji practice at that point. Okay, I'll go through. All right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I definitely feel it as I'm moving along, but uh, when I drop my arms down, it seems to be much more intense. Is there a reason for that? I mean, whatever you're, you're feeling it more when your arms are down. Yes. Yeah. Uh, after I finish that uh, that portion, uh, and that happens many times. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Oh, and if I could ask a question, oh, if you, uh, if I may, uh, did I cut you off, uh, Rick? No, no, no. Go ahead. Okay, I was also going to ask. When you say feel into the emptiness, I uh, you just sent the uh, chi down. You know, you put the plunger down. Are you feeling past your feet? Is that it? Where the wherever the chi went? This is, what's the question again? Uh, after you clear uh, the chi, right, you say feel chi. into the emptiness. Right, so what does that mean? Right? Uh, it, it basically, uh, you're talking about direction. Would I feel it down below me? Because that's where I sent the chi. You know, after okay. we, uh, well, we we're trying to disappear the chi. So direction yeah. doesn't really matter. So oh. when I say feel into the emptiness, what it is is we're shifting our point of focus from ordinarily we're, let's say, 80% energy and 20% chi, you know, mm -hmm. the, way our, the way we identify, self-identify. What we want to do is flip that around mm. so that you're, you are the energy, you're not feeling the energy. Ah. And so you, you are, you become this, you become this thing, so you become, you blend in with the nature chi mm -hmm. to do that. So it's like you're, you become part of the nature chi as it's moving through you. You by emptying out, you've created a void mm -hmm. form that allows the the nature chi to fill up. So it's your chi is coming up, the sky chi is coming down, and there's a party. And uh, you uh, yeah, it's in your house. And uh, uh, yeah, Richard. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, Richard. Uh, what what I've been trying to do is, um, in this case, feel my elbow, and then having that um, precipitate a feeling of fullness. Uh, it seems as though when I can achieve. When I can achieve, when I can achieve that fullness, that that's what I'm looking for. Um, so I don't I don't know if you have a comment about that. Um, I, I I think that uh, uh, my thing is that is where you start. You start with the fullness. Then it's like okay, I got a full tank of gas. Now where am I gonna where am I gonna drive to? <laughs> that's that's the next step, right? So, getting the full tank of gas, great. You know, good job on that. Now, nice. put it in gear and let's go someplace. And that's uh, 
um, that's where we where a Taiji form or a Qigong form. Is. Okay, because that's where that the fullness when you feel the fullness and then move it, it seems to only move in certain directions. And those directions, I'm guessing, are associated with the gates. They're associated with the gates, but they're also, and the gates are specific chins, which are directly, uh, they're the signatures of Taiji Tran. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Many chins, any, any, any way, direction you, you take energy and you move it, that's, that's a chin if you're doing it you know, with, with consciously. Um, but the, uh, uh, the, the gates are specific Tai Chi chins. So, uh, 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 and the chins get really subtle too, but let's just stick with the, the more obvious ones right now, you know, which are you know, that you know, ward off, roll back, press and push kind of kind of gin see we those are those are easily identifiable then you have you know the more subtle ones are like spiraling gin and coiling gin and ting gin and there's a lot of things that, that go from there but this is getting your foundation in first with the with those with those eight gates then you can like you can branch out from there and really it can can go crazy um i i uh well i haven't I've, I've sort of dropped this practice i'm now going to get right back to it um but i used to ev every day do an eight gate meditation okay do you have any advice about how to about how to over -inter intellectualize the, <laughs> the uh, meditation? I, I would love to, to speak with you more more about that. I, I don't know enough about what what uh, your eight gate. Is that something you picked up from Kumar or something? No, no, it's something we've been doing for a long time. It began. Okay. It's master from Master Joe. Master Joe. Okay, cool. I'd, I'd be curious to uh, to see what that looks like. Well, it's that it's it's simply standing eight the eight postures. Okay. You no, know, the starting here, here, you know, here. So it's the it's the traditional postures and pathways of the eight gates, and uh, uh, I. It's always been a very comfortable practice for me. Uh -huh. uh, but I, kind I of like to, like to talk about that. It's you know, something maybe we can uh, you can present at some point. That'd be good. Okay. Good. Okay. Love love to do that. Yeah. Great, Scott. Yeah. So um, some and some of these when we're holding our arms up. Or, you know, can, 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 I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Uh, on some of the exercises where I'm holding, where we're holding our arms out. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of tension in my shoulders. Am I just? Do I just need to let the hell go, or what? Uh, that that that's a good start. It, this will help with that. Reaching with your elbows helps with that. So if uh, you know you, uh, I'm sure in your line of work you've you do a lot of carrying. And uh, so there's a lot of a lot of that is, is deeply embedded into your into your your being, right? And uh, into your nervous system. And so shedding that so that you can oh not now's not the time to carry. I can let that I can put my bag down now. And then you uh, so but to uh, just that that one uh, this one here where your arms are down, you know and and just reaching with your elbows, that's a good one for uh, just letting letting some of that go. So you can just kind of let the arms unwind at that point, let the shoulders unwind. Mm -hmm. Let the arms kind of like, you know, feel the weight of the arms as they're doing that. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? This is good. Good stuff. Yeah, Valerie. I'm just, I'm just going to add to that. So, um, so you're feeling tension with your, you know, having your arms up versus having them down. Uh, wouldn't a good practice be rather than trying to reach with your elbows and have them too high, just start off lower and reach out that way. And then as your body 
uh, becomes accustomed to that, unwinds more, then you can extend up higher, so to speak. I think that's what I'm just saying, but yes, thanks for, okay. for, for amplifying that thought. But that's, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, if, you, if you start by that, because obviously if your, your arms up here like this, you know, let's say, you know, uh, close, uh, you know, uh, universal post, right? That's, that's one, it takes some practice being able to, to do that without shoulder tension. You know, whereas if your arms are down, then it's much easier, it's much easier ramp to get up on and to release some of that shoulder tension first. Cool. Anybody else? <laughs> Got it. You have to un unmute. You're muted. Oh, lost him. I have to come back. Um, yeah, anybody else? We're waiting for Dennis to come back. He's there coming back. Hey, Dennis. So, can you unmute him? There he is. Am I unmuted? You're unmuted, yes. Okay. They've taken the muzzle okay. off. Yeah, I noticed that. I've always heard the term so, uh, shoulder strike. That really is a mis misnomer. There's really, there really is so much more going on. I noticed, you know, that exercise you did with Maria where you push her wrists in. You, yes. you use that to demonstrate it, you know, pointing with the finger before. Right. So is, is what you were demonstrating, like when you, when you pointed the finger, was, were you energizing the, the yes. Deal then? Yeah, so it's, it's the same kind, it's a similar kind of thing. She's, uh, <clears throat> she's able to get to a heightened state of coherence very quickly with the fingers. And so she's able to do that. You, and this you, is, you were energizing your elbows at the same time. Uh, uh, yes, but uh, you make a good point there, Dennis. I'd like to make a clarification there that a lot of these tests I, that I do, they can be used for a variety of, of, of different situations. And whatever you're focusing on is what gets the attention at 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 the moment. Oh, okay. Whatever we're uh, you we're reaching with the elbows, we're kind of pointing with the elbow. Okay. Right, and it opens up the shoulder joint. It's a, it's it's a little different than just coherence. Coherence yeah. that we you know we get by reaching with the with the the index fingers. That brings the whole system together. Yeah. It alerts your connective tissue system of its uh, tensegrity and the energetic coherence, and that's really cool. And so it reminds your system that you are a wholeness. Okay. And then what we're doing when we're reaching with the elbow is we're unlocking a major kink in the hose, which is the shoulders. What Scott was just talking about there. Like if you're the shoulder tension, then you are blocking the chi. And so you can be coherent and still have tension in your body. Okay. Right? It doesn't mean you've, the job's over. It just means that you've taken a step one, which is, okay, we've established wholeness. Great. Good. Now what? Let's fill up. What do we do? We feel the, uh, the three pillars. We get, feel the balls of the feet. Center over that. Good. Reach with the knee one. Open the jade pillow gate. Ah. You start. What have we done now? We've opened up to the big chi. The energy, the chi of the earth is coming up. The chi of the heavens is coming down. The yang chi of the heavens. The yin chi of the earth. And like you're, it's moving through you. You are a channel now for the big chi. Oh, that's great. So now you're filling up. Oh, okay. Now what do we do? We unkink the hoses. Okay. And there's a bunch of them. The, the qua is a big one, right? So your hip joint, we can tend to, to lock up there. What do we do? We, uh, we boom, boom. We open up the qua so then, then we, we the, that drag on the system, that little dam gets broken. We feel the, open the, the jade pillow gate and that creates a, uh, uh, that opens up the, uh, the, uh, uh, the kink of the hose there. Now, oh, where's the next one? Shoulders. If we can feel the energy in the shoulders, if we can release the shoulders, then we're no longer having that, that dam that's, that's setting up there. Then 
we feel the elbows, reach with the elbows, and we open up the shoulders. And so suddenly we're plugging in and like a whole bunch of stuff is coming together at this point, which makes it uh, makes it really cool. And then, great, now what? Where do I go from here? And that's where you do a Tai Chi form, you do a Qigong form, you, you do something that is moving the Qi around. You've filled up more than you've ever filled up before, but now what are you going to do? What am I going to do with it? If you just sit on it, <laughs> maybe, maybe you have a tough time sleeping at night. Yeah. <laughs> You need to search. They, 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 saying you're using the mind to lead to lead the chi to to, to go to yeah, go there. So the, right. the e leads the chi. The chi yeah. leads the blood. So right, right, get right. That, get that, that right. circulation, and you get a you get a, um, a micro circulation at the at the cellular level. You start your chi goes to all the little cells in it, and all those cells were kind of like er, going to sleep or <laughs> dying off, then they're waking up again and they're yeah. <laughs> you kids. <laughs> and you talk about opening uh, neural pathways, so that's kind of the goal. That the, the neural pathway is just a, a way of controlling your body so that you can get the chi moving. So it's yeah. not one or the other; it's a combination. It's okay. different levels of uh, different levels of substantiality. You want somebody to say something? I had a question. Yes, what's your question? So when you are, it doesn't matter whether you start from your finger or your elbow or your foot, what you're actually doing is connecting the dots, uh, no matter where the first initiation point is, if your gates are open and there's no kinks in the hose, wherever you start, it should connect with everything else, right? In theory, yes. In theory, yes. So. Did everybody get that that question? It's like it doesn't matter where you start. That you you you, as long as you're you're getting everybody open, then uh, the energy should fill up and you should circulate it well. And that's and that is actually true in, um, conceptually. In reality, though, you're going to have places that you are not not fully uh, activated yet. So you start, wh where, do you, where do I start is, is the question that comes, comes to mind. It's like, you know, which one is, which one's the one that I need? And that's gonna be different for, for each of you on a different day. But as a, as a general rule, I, I say, start with the fingers because once you're in a state of coherence, everything gets easier. Then you open up the other gates. And uh, I say the elbow gates right now, I'm emphasizing that as a place of starting because that's the one that has gotten maybe the least amount of attention of, of the, you know, of the lot. It's something that we don't think about the elbows very much unless we, you know, smack them and hurt. You know, it's something that is not, we don't initiate from the elbows. We, we, you know, they're 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 mostly at a at, we're mostly unconscious of it. So now, if you can start to wake those up and you get those going, then you're you're doing much better. You do uh, you're able to to make stuff happen very quickly. Okay, we're running out of time here. Any questions? Any other questions? Any thoughts? Questions? Comments? Complaints? Requests. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. you. Out of there, Nick. Yay! <laughs> Good. <laughs> so glad to see you guys. Um, so yeah, oh uh, yeah, Scott. Well, since you're fishing for questions, I, I find any time, a lot of times when I start to feel my elbows. Like I, that's how I start my meditation. They will just rise on their own. So, so say that again. You you start so, feeling like any time, pretty much any time I I feel into my elbows, they will just start to rise. You know, rise up. Okay. Is that a anything you can? Uh, I would say it probably goes back to your earlier question, 
which is the shoulder tension. Huh. So it's something that it, they rise up because the muscles, whenever you're not thinking about them, they're 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 tightening up. So so rather than rising, you want to actually consciously reach out as if you want to touch, you know, someone or touch something, you know, with your elbows. Like, oh, what's that over there? And so when you do that, then the then the energy has a place to go. If if you don't give it a place to go, then then your natural state is going to, to dominate your unconscious state and and the, the muscular contraction that's already built in will tend to make it go up. So that's the way I'm thinking. So ideally, you don't want the elbows up here. You don't want them down here. You want them kind of uh, right around. Yeah, yeah. Like that, Rick. Yeah, right, right. Uh, the, the middle way. OK, anybody else? OK, thank you all so much. Really great to see you, Al. Bye, y'all. Yeah, thanks, Rick. Bye-bye. Thank you, Rick. You bet. Love you. Bye. Thank you. Love you. Thank you, Rick. You bet. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs>